Hey guys, how you doing? Check this out. Hmm. I have to start by saying that I'm so obsessed with acoustic instruments. It's really like my biggest passion in life. And uh, even more after I came across the maker of this beautiful, beautiful flute. This is a type of video I've wanted to do many times in the past with instruments that I love and that I have the fortune of enjoying. But I guess it took uh, an extra special one for me to finally do something like this. And that's uh, because this is a custom made instrument that I put so much thought and time in designing, not just the actual visual design of it, but arriving to a concept that I really resonate with and that I find very cool, which is the solar eclipse, which to me, it's almost like a type of a yin yang where two opposites come together and create something beautiful. And uh, the other reason is because of who made the instrument, and that's Brent Haynes of Wood Sounds Flutes and his uh, amazing team. Shout out to Josh and Ty. Those guys are magicians. Yeah. I also have to say that I was just so, so fortunate to even be able to afford this flute because everything aligned perfectly like in an eclipse. You know, I finally was able to sell a couple of my old instruments and then a week later or so wood sounds came out with a 20 percent discount with an additional 10 percent for people who had gotten a flute within the past month which i had and then in the process of designing the flute i got to do a lot of work for brenton wood sounds which was uh, an amazing process and gave me a very very nice credit towards this flute so i couldn't have been more fortunate for that so I refer to this as the Eclipse Double. And that's uh, because one flute would be the sun with copper bands and the other is the moon with silver bands. And they both come together and unite and play music and do hopefully something beautiful, depending on the player. <laughs> then for the end caps and the mouthpiece, we have big pieces of ebony with inlaid stars, which is like outer space. So it's almost like the flute is in outer space. But it's in the mouthpiece where we really get this whole eclipse uh, visual made in, in, in very intricate and beautiful metalwork with some red coral and faux ivory in the bottom. So on the top, we have a little circle in red coral that would be the sun. And on the bottom, a little circle that is uh, in faux ivory, which is the same material. And they're each on their respective paths, the sun being on this copper wave and the moon on a silver one. And they're like in a dance where they finally join in the very center, which is also where the air is coming in and joining both flutes. Uh, and that's where the eclipse happens. The eclipse being made in African blackwood, chased in copper, showing like that ring that happens when the moon and the sun align perfectly. The totem beds are also made in ebony with the silver stars. And uh, for the top totem, we have this white raven, which is also part of like a side story in regards to the sun, because as Brent was telling me a Native American story, he was telling me that the raven used to be white and it turned black when it went to get the sun and bring it back to the people to offer them warmth. And then on the bottom totem, we just have in the same material, a little shape of a diamond, which I kind of associate with like the cold moon. For this flute, I got a travel totem, and that's just to, if I travel or take the flute out with me, I don't have to take out the top totem, which is quite delicate. And that travel totem matches the bottom one very well because it's in that same style, but it's a red flame made in red coral, which is the same material as the little sun here. The saddles that join the flutes are also made in ebony, and then the flutes are made in kingwood but it's not the Brazilian Kingwood, which is the more popular variety. It's actually from Mexico. It's Mexican Kingwood, also known as Camatillo, which unfortunately tends to be bunched up with Brazilian Kingwood or confused for it in many occasions. But in reality, they're two completely different species of wood. They are both rosewoods. They're both very, very heavy and uh, hard a lot heavier and harder than ebony, for example. The Brazilian one tends to be a little lighter in color than the Mexican with very dark, straight streaks of grain, while the Mexican has much tighter grain that varies from black to dark purple to cream streaks and can also be interlocked. 
and the Mexican one being particularly oily. I actually showed a sensitivity to this flute which was a little concerning at first, but um, Brent recommended that I clean it very well. So I got this pure alcohol and I spent like five hours just cleaning it like crazy. I even remember pouring a little bit of alcohol inside of the tube, which are not finished inside and letting it run out. And it came out completely purple. This beautiful purple from the oil and the wood. Hey guys, so I want to share a bit about the design process because I came up with a way of pretty much seeing my ideas and my designs as real flutes in a, like in pictures. I mean, they were not real, but you'll see what I mean. And this was so revealing and helpful as I developed a concept and settled on a design that I want to offer this service to people who are interested in getting a custom-made flute. So I started with uh, colored pencil drawings and after getting tired of drawing a bunch of designs and ideas and not really knowing how they would look, I started taking snapshots of different parts of flutes from the Woodsons website and building my own mock-ups. So I finally settled on Camatillo flutes using silver and copper to represent the eclipse. As you can see, the mouthpiece was going to have yellow cedar burl and the Southeast Asian rosewood burl with intricate inlay work for the end of the flutes. Then I thought that maybe a dyed box elder burl could take me more to outer space and like in a nebula or something like that, which I also loved the contrast of all these more unique, weird colors. But then Brent and his guys realized that the amount of time it was going to take to do this intricate metal inlay would have raised the price of the flute significantly out of my budget. So I went with more traditional end caps and I actually was happy I did that because I felt that that really tied the flute together. But then the same happened with the dyed uh, box elder burl because dyeing wood is a big process on itself and then putting it next to something like yellow cedar burl would have been tricky and would have taken a lot of time not to stain that yellow cedar burl. So I had to get rid of that uh, box elder burl and started experimenting with another wood like African blackwood, thinking the contrast with yellow cedar burl would be cool. But then I do know the contrast between African blackwood and ebony is very nice. It's subtle, but it's beautiful. And I thought, well, maybe that ebony at the very end of the flutes is going to be like outer space. And maybe if we put like silver stars, that would be cool. But then I started thinking, you know, this is, this is looking like a less is more type of a design. And as soon as I made the old ebony with stars, I just knew I had arrived to the final design. But I still had one hesitation. I had not seen Camatillo in person yet. And I did know that it could be quite dark after being finished. And if I was sure of something is that I wanted a very clear contrast between my African Blackwood flute and this Eclipse double. So I just made up a mock-up of the double flute with African Blackwood and put it side by side. Showed it to Brent and he said, yes, Pablo, that's very, very close. But at the same time, I was like, well, now I want to see how this flute would look in something completely different like a burl or what if we compare both kingwoods i ended up going with camatillo i just love the purple in this wood you know if you hold this flute by itself you don't necessarily think it's purple but once you put it next to other flutes that are more a regular type of a brown or reddish color it definitely looks purple i just love that i love that tight grain the smell the sound i should also add that it's very heavy a fun little fact is that they're called Kingwood because many years ago, French kings used to bring a lot of this wood to Europe to use it for details in their furniture or just to make furniture itself. So anyways, yeah, this is a little bit what I wanted to share because as I said, it's a service that I'm going to offer for whoever is interested in playing with designs and just seeing their flute before they actually go ahead and make the order or just commit to a design. So how about we play the flute a little bit to hear how it sounds and also just so I can show you what you can do with a double flute. So the first way you can play a double flute is as a single flute. These are both completely playable flutes except the bottom one has all these leather straps which look very cool. I think 
especially in contrast with my leather jacket. It's almost like I'm gonna go ride my bike after this with the flute like hanging from my back or something, <laughs> which I don't have one, but it looks very cool. Anyways, if you take off all these leather bands, you could play the bottom flute as, a, as the top flute, which is the main flute here. So, like I said, you could play it as a single flute. That's because the, the mouthpiece has two independent holes for each flute. One of them is a little raised, and that would be for the top flute, the main flute. So let's hear how it sounds. I love it. Um, and then you can start incorporating that bottom flute. And um, the simplest way is to just use it as a drone. So normally what you do is you cover all six holes and just use that fundamental note as a drone. That, and this is how that, that goes. <laughs> After that you can uh, start sliding some of these straps so normally what you start with is uncovering that last hole and now you have a, a new note as a drone so one thing that I find very interesting here is that if you stick to that new note of the drone for the root note on what you play on the top now you have a major scale you have a completely different scale which is a very different sensation so just to show you the difference, the main scale in, in, a, in most native flutes that I know of is a mi minor pentatonic, which sounds like this. But if you open that last hole and you start the scale from there and you play the pentatonic, now you have a major pentatonic, which is... So let's play something based on that new scale with that same drone. I ended with that fundamental note of the minor pentatonic and I don't know if you felt that but it kind of pulls you back to that minor feeling. So anyways, you keep sliding leather straps and um, now you have the bottom two holes open. I think this is where Brent likes to play Amazing Grace. So I, I want to try doing that and see how that sounds.
Nice. Need to practice that a little bit more. But um, to end this demonstration, because I don't think that there's really an end to what you can do with this, you uncover that next hole. So now you have the bottom three holes on the, on the bottom flute open. And you can still drone with that. But where this, where this starts becoming a lot more interesting is you can now play it as a double flute instead of a drone flute. So you bring one of your hands to the bottom flute to cover those three holes and you can start harmonizing. And I will warn you, this will probably get very messy. But it's all about having fun and just letting it flow. <laughs> Expected ending um, and that's a little bit of what you can do with it and uh, one of Brent's cool inventions is the easy clean mouthpiece so you can remove the mouthpiece and that's to blow out the moisture out of it and um, also just so you have better access to cleaning the the flutes inside which uh, protects not only the wood, but your health from um, just bacteria growing in because of the moisture and stuff like that. So I want to, again, thank Brent and Wood Sounds, Ty, Josh, Julia, and Taylor. Uh, that's uh, all the guys I know of there. But um, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you as well. I hope you take care.